Travis Wayne Goodsell. So, those Mormons who attack me, who come on my channel just so that they can put thumbs down on my videos and run away and hide and laugh, thinking they've owned me, they're living on borrowed light. They're ignorant about the gospel. They're ignorant about Mormonism. They've never actually studied Mormonism <clears throat> because it's handed to us by the church. They have church set up, they have seminary set up, they have BYUs set up. So we just sit, regurgitate the information that we're given, and we think we know it all. And so when somebody comes along with information that's not in accordance with the indoctrination we've been given, they lash out. And you'll notice that the stories of a character named Jesus, he never went on a campaign to troll the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. He stuck to himself. Those who believed came and listened to him. Those who didn't believe, well, they're the ones who came to him to heckle him and harass him and accuse him falsely of all sorts of things. And in that position, he stood up and defended himself. There's a big difference when you know and have that light for yourself and you're not living on borrowed light. It's a ding, and it's bugging me. And so, how do you get the light concerning Mormonism? Well, you start with deity, the theology. And so we have the first vision, which is unique because of uh, uh, President Richards, who did the pamphlet on his mission in England. <clears throat> and then when he came back, uh, it was published under John Taylor in 1880 in the Pearl Grey Press. So the other churches really don't have it because uh, it wasn't part of the Doctrine and Covenants, though they may be familiar with it because they're trying to get the light for themselves. But uh, the history that I grew up with had been doctored and edited by Willard Richards and uh, the church no longer publishes it. We now have the Joseph Smith papers which the church says, the church says, is the authoritative source now. Nonetheless, when we read our scriptures about the first vision, we are not given the name Jesus for these personages. He's described as the sun at noonday. And so if you're clueless, because you're not doing your research, you're not pursuing Egyptian knowledge or Hebrew or, or uh, anything archeological and historical, uh, you're not going to know that that's referring to Amun of the Egyptians, the sun god. And so uh, Emmanuel of Isaiah is who that's referring to. It's not Jesus. This is the learning of the Jews. And if you're a Mormon, you're ignorant, it's Jesus, 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 all of a sudden you've attacked me, you put your thumbs down, you're gone. You're, you may even bear your testimony of how Jesus is the one true Christ. Now I'm going to burn in hell. But um, it, it's fun. Those who claim Jesus, they usually quote New Testament stuff. And so I just quote it back to them. Judge not by their fruits. Beam and moat. And that silences them. Uh, but uh, for Mormons, I just use the Book of Mormon to silence Mormons. And it, it, it's, it's frustrating that Mormons have no clue about what their Book of Mormon talks about, but they all bear their testimony and cry about how true it is. <clears throat> Again, this is borrowed light behavior, not your own light behavior. 
and uh, and so then you get to this personage who's being symbolized as Emmanuel of Isaiah he then tells Joseph Smith that uh, Christianity is all wrong and so Mormons want to be Christian what it's always been frustrating to me I knew the first vision went on my mission told the first vision to other people I knew that it said we're not supposed to be Christian what's going on why are Mormons demanding and insisting we become Christian and uh, Hinckley gets up in the one priesthood session and he says uh, <clears throat> we're not Christian but uh, the sun here comes the sun doo -doo 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 -doo. trying to find a way to prevent the sun from interfering yeah go behind a cloud <laughs> go hide for a couple hours while I do videos I don't need borrowed light <laughs> and so uh, then he goes on to say well okay we're not Christian so the next logical thing is I guess Jesus isn't our Christ and so sure enough he then says all their creeds are an abomination in his sight and so when you research and study to get the light for yourself you then find oh Constantine's Nicene Creed at Nicene Council 325 CE oh Jesus is the Christ hmm yep and so when you realize that they're not just it's not about Christianity is evil and wrong it's Constantine that's the focus but if Christians don't get it because they don't have the light for themselves they too start behaving as Mormons do when critics come around and say wait a minute well whoa, whoa hell, hold on here this is weird uh, you know golden not gold but we have no plates you know how can you know stuff like that okay. Adjust my time. and so uh, yeah Jesus is not our Christ and Christians are actually being warned of the danger of Christianity as well that they've been duped and for Mormons to push Jesus uh, it, it's you know you're getting duped yourself because you're living on borrowed light that's the danger of living on borrowed light not having the light for yourself is when people attack me I just brush it off because I know that they're ignorant they're living on borrowed light they're not attacking me knowingly like President Nelson and the Apostles when they send me death threats over the pulpit of conference because they're upset with the lawsuits I did that put certain things in the public domain <laughs> but hey that's evidence <clears throat> but then Mormons should take this to the next step all right well our prophets since Brigham Young have been pushing Jesus and it's Joseph that's telling us something different Joseph isn't telling us it's Jesus Joseph isn't saying I'm gonna start my own Christian church that's Mormons who are living on borrowed light who have imposed Christianity and Jesus on the Joseph Smith and so it, it shouldn't be a fear that you're gonna lose your testimony because you don't have one if you're living on borrowed light you have no testimony you have your own light that's a testimony you have witnessed physically witnessed not spiritually physically witnessed the truth and you're able to bear testimony of it to other people and so when you go around telling people I know Jesus lives eh, hung on multiple levels and so for me I've always been a defender of Joseph Smith 
because I have researched it. It started with Paleo Hebrew, has uh, his King Follett discourse made some claims. He says the Hebrew text is translated incorrectly, not just the English from the Hebrew. And so I wanted to know how do you know? Well, you got to learn Hebrew. And Biblical Hebrew tells you this is the way it is. And it's the way it's always going to be. There's a fixed translation because of what they added in. Oh, they added stuff in? Well, we need to take it out if we're going to restore the original. Ta-da! It was a no-brainer for me. And why nobody else did this is because they're living on borrowed light and they're afraid of the truth and blah, 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 that their traditions are wrong. They're scared to know the truth. They'd rather live the lie and get paid for it. And so, yeah, the, the next step is that the prophets are lying to us since Brigham Young. And then the next step is, well, if they're lying to us, and they're the leaders of the church, they therefore know they're lying to us, they're purposely lying to us. Now it becomes a situation of they're intentionally seeking to deceive us. And then you realize everything in Mormonism is wrong. Everything. We can't trust them for anything now. And once you come to that realization, ex-Mormons, <laughs> you'll stop arguing about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. Because what we've been told about them is wrong. You are led to believe he's a polygamist. Why? Because the church says he is. <laughs> you believe the church knowing they lied to us. It's just, you're not thinking. You're not being logical in your conclusions. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it's great to do memes about how Joseph Smith is a bad, evil guy, and criminal, and all that stuff. You don't get the real truth about how he was framed by Brigham Young and his Danites. That they were the ones who were the evil that was the secret organization within the church seeking to overthrow Joseph, seeking to get him out of the way so that they can take it over. And they did. Though other branch offs uh, emerged that didn't want anything to do with Brigham and his evil. And, uh, and so, uh, what you choose to watch, what you choose to listen to regarding church matters and anything in your life, uh, you need to understand that if you're just picking and choosing what you want to believe rather than going, oh, that's something interesting, I want to research that, you're just living on other people's supposedly claimed light. Because oftentimes you're getting multiple hand down borrowed light. People pass down borrowed light to borrowed light. As uh, the early church members who followed Brigham Young were the ones who, hey, I got an idea. I think this is the way it is. And it gets passed on from generation to generation, especially when it's somebody over the pulpit of the conferences. And, uh, I, for example, are Mormons not allowed to watch any R-rated movie whatsoever? The answer is no. We are allowed to watch R-rated movies under certain conditions. What are those conditions? Article of Faith number 13. If there's anything lovely, beautiful, of good, reported, praiseworthy, we seek after these things. That was in Benson's talk, but you shut off your brains after he said, don't watch R-rated movies, and your brain shut off. You didn't listen to that R, and then you have to understand that he's not authoritative, he's a false prophet on top of that. And so then you have to reevaluate. 
but Joseph Smith gave us the Articles of Faith through the Wentworth letter. And so it was, really wasn't two Mormons, and that needs to be understood in the context. And so uh, anything that has Jesus in there, for example, <clears throat> I think uh, four, isn't it? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand that he's talking to someone else and he doesn't want to come right out and say he's this completely new religion that uh, nobody's ever been familiar with he's trying to bridge the information and so you have to use Jesus to get people to understand yeah we believe the first principles and ordinances of the gospel are first faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's talking to Wentworth, and Wentworth understands Jesus. Just like Ammon with the Lamanite king, are you the Great Spirit? No, I'm not the Great Spirit. But he uses the Great Spirit to try to help uh, the king understand things. He's not caving to his doctrinal beliefs to uh, get along and not be murdered by him. You know, he's, he's trying to bridge the gap of understanding and learning, trying to teach him how to learn. And uh, that's, that's the difference. And Mormons don't catch on in their scriptures that that's what's being done with the Book of Mormon. <coughs> and so, yeah, that's pretty much what I have down in my notes. So, uh, yeah. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good on one video here. <laughs>